Thanks for clicking on this video. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon and turn on all notifications to keep up to date with the latest information and discussions. Uh oh. Maybe Goku isn't the ideal being that the Guardian of Earth should back. Hey guys, MasterCoX here. One of my few what if scenarios that begins back in the days of Dragon Ball has certainly picked up a fair bit of interest in regards to something a little less obvious. You know, something a little less obvious than just a simple difference in power and whatnot. This one doesn't just go about making Goku stronger or anything like that, but it pretty much changes his outlook on life entirely and where he looks for a challenge. That is a very major modification to a character who relies on fighting strong guys for the fun of it. Now, he wants to fight them to prove time and time again that he is the best and no one else is. And that's a far more arrogant soul as a result of asking the question, what if Goku defeated Roshi? Masako, I'm sure that he has beaten Roshi before in a sparring match. What makes this more special? Well, I'm talking about the time back in the 21st World Martial Arts Tournament where Goku faced off against the old star known as Jackie Chun, also Master Roshi in a disguise. And yes, the observant amongst you may have noticed that I changed the title of the first part. Why? Well, hashtag YT being YT and all that. Algorithms. In the original, Jackie Chun won against Goku in a very close contest so as to teach the young man the meaning of discipline and all that. You know, you should always assume that there is someone out there stronger than you and to therefore aspire to keep on time and time and time again, striving to be better, pushing your limits and never settling. And it's a very admirable mission, had it actually worked. And in this scenario, it didn't. Goku relied on his trademark chompers to get the better of the monster, and it led to a pretty big shift in how Goku went about his life from there on out. In the last part, we summarized all the points in the Dragon Ball timeline, which had been tweaked in some way due to Goku's persona being more geared towards simply being the best, and proving a point to those who would dare oppose him. This then became not just arrogance, but self-righteousness. A sense of purpose to be a tough, but fair combatant in the case of General Blue, whom relied on accessories to win, and that was something Goku didn't abide by in the slightest. However, when Mercenary Tao bested him, that galvanized the young boy even further. Before then, there was hope that he could just revert back to what he should have been, but not after this one. He didn't want to win against Tao to stop a bad guy. He wanted to best him to settle a score, effectively becoming much more of a selfish person. By the time we get to the start of this part, Grandpa Gohan is impressed upon Roshi via Fortune Teller Barber's place to seriously curtail Goku's self-righteous behaviour, or else it may seem revert into the tempestuous and feral child that he was when he was just a wee babby. But now, Goku has clasped eyes on the likes of Ten Shinhan and Shaotzu, whom he suspects to be agents of Mercenary Tao, what with their Dodon Ray powers. But in any case, the 22nd World Martial Arts Tournament had started, and Goku has a title to defend by any means necessary. Regardless of this, the people of Master Shen isn't phased by Goku's postulating. Ten Shinhan shows to Goku his brutality by mercilessly defeating both Nam and Yamcha, akin to how he did in the original, but with a slightly more spirited approach so as to unsettle the defending champion. He's got a purpose this time. Our Goku now knows that this triclop means business. On the surface, Goku acts nonchalant, but underneath, he remembers back to when Tao bested him and anticipates that this guy may be just as sneaky and to the point. But despite this, in this timeline, our Goku is a little bit less quirky, more serious. He wants to beat him not only for the sake of his friends, but mostly because he lives to overcome any opponent and any obstacle. He's not as concerned with the welfare of Yamcha, for example, whom had just experienced a really intense encounter with Ten Shinhan, if you may remember. Nope, Goku just simply doesn't care as much. The fight with Krillin and Chiaotzu convinces Goku that these two are indeed connected to the despicable mercenary Tao. All of his previous suspicions are now beyond doubt. He was right all along, only enhancing and amplifying his self-righteous nature. He will best this guy for sure. And after Krillin wins his fight with Chiaotzu, Goku then decides to start playing games with his opponent. He begins to taunt Ten Shinhan, saying that, oh, 
I ended your idol's evil existence, so therefore you pupils must be real weaklings. <laughs> and all this does is enrage Ten Shin Han instead of scaring him. No, okay, this is getting personal. Bad call, monkey boy. Also, like in the original, Roshi tries to warn Ten Shin Han about the evil path that he's following. And Ten Shin Han isn't buying this, thinking that he isn't being that's evil at all. He's, you know, justified in what he does. Roshi then also forfeits the fight, which confuses both Ten Shin Han and Goku. Why would he do this against Ten Shin Han? This time though, Roshi has a plan. In this timeline, Roshi understands that Ten Shin Han might be the one who could in a way teach Goku some humility and provide a worthy challenge. If he couldn't do it, Ten Shin Han might just be able to do it. It was all the perfect opportunity to right the wrong from the previous tournament. Kind of worked out in a way. Besides, in the here and now, his feud with Master Shen, Roshi's one, is less important. The integrity of his student is far more important, even if he has to lose to realize it. The final battle between Ten Shin Han and Goku is far more fierce than in the original timeline. Chiaotzu's intervention in procedures, much like with General Blue's intervention before, enrages Goku to the point that he starts to fight angrier and more savage than ever before. This dishonorable and unfair interruption by Chiaotzu was a personal slight against him, and the young boy will not let this slide at all. Roshi then gets rid of Shen, who's trying to mess with the match, while still being worried regarding Goku's behavior. Still, Ten Shin Han's forearm technique proves to be a lot of strain for the young Saiyan. The two then proceed to fight in the air, but this time, Goku uses the Kamehameha to leap onto Ten Shin Han, biting and scratching with every fiber of his being, which greatly reduces his propulsion. When they find themselves about to hit the truck, you know, like they do in the original, Goku is still holding on to Ten Shin Han with the vehicle approaching fast. At the last second, Goku then fires another Kamehameha in the face and intentionally throws Ten Shin Han under the truck. Goku has won, but Ten Shin Han is very badly hurt. Mm, sure, Goku's managed to win the tournament for a second time, but he certainly didn't win the kudos of his friends. Not at all. Goku's friends are feeling extremely sour about their friend's behavior, and the attention quickly goes towards Ten Shin Han to see whether he's okay. Roshi then promises Chiaotzu that he will do everything he can to bring Ten Shin Han back to full health. And Chiaotzu appreciates that. At least someone's being respectful about their opponent. Goku feels confused about all this, and quite frankly, he's feeling slightly betrayed. Why is Roshi helping this guy and not giving his pupil the glory of having won the tournament two times in a row? This isn't right. Okay, on one hand, he does feel some kind of guilt about the injury sustained to Ten Shin Han on a human level. But on the other hand, he still considers Ten Shin Han to be as despicable as Tao. He still can't get that out of his head. Just because. On that note, Goku decides to leave the group and find his own way in life. He doesn't like these people anymore, they're boring, they're getting in the way. And in that whole emotional episode, Goku forgets to take his power pole, or his Dragon Ball. Throughout all of this though, Krillin is the only one who is willing to talk to Goku and to try and make him come back to the group and figure all of this out. The monk decides to go out and find him. Goku is camping all alone in the forest, still trying to get to grips with what just happened back there. After all they've been through, his master effectively sided with the enemy and ignored his own students. I mean, that is a very warped way of looking at what happened, but that's just how Goku sees it, viewing the situation right now. He's making it all about himself instead of the situation at hand, which is Ten Shin Han having been cruelly played. Eventually, Goku dozes off to sleep, keen to put this day behind him. And while he slumbers, he has nightmares in which his best friend Krillin is calling for help. He gets surrounded by a number of dark shadows, which are nondescript. They're just there, looming over Krillin with nowhere for him to escape. It turns out though, it wasn't just a dream. When Goku wakes the next morning, he is alarmed to what he finds motionless on the ground. Goku finds Krillin in the forest with no sign of life and only manages to catch a shadow of what we know to be Tambourine taking the Dragon Ball. His Dragon Ball. Goku then finds the power pole in Krillin's bag and begins to weep. The only friend that didn't turn his back on him is now gone. That is the ultimate slight. No turning back now. Goku feels very determined to learn about the identity of the perpetrator and to bring him to justice. Meanwhile, Roshi, Bulma and the others are helping Ten Shin Han recover from his wounds at the hands of Goku and the truck. Roshi asks Bulma to get to Korin to ask him for some sensu beans. 
Ten Shinhan is very, very perplexed as to why Roshi is now helping him, despite he and his master's differences in the past. Roshi is then keen to impress that this has gone beyond such a petty squabble. Ten Shinhan didn't deserve to be brought into it. He fought well, despite being a touch harsh previously. The young man is actually kind of touched by this pragmatic view, a warm view of all of this. And in this timeline, Chiaotzu and Ten Shinhan accept Master Roshi's offer of becoming his new pupils after the disappearance of Goku and Krillin's sudden disappearance. The old master, however, is worried that something bad must have happened to those two. Goku manages to find Tambourine after a brief chase and demands his Dragon Ball back and that he will pay for what he did to Krillin. But the monster simply laughs at him and can sense that this boy is low on energy and he has nothing to give. Goku is exhausted from the hunt and lack of sleep and food from his disturbing nightmares. And despite his determination trying to carry him through this, Goku's stomach is the reason why he gets beaten. Luckily for him though, he meets Yajirobe. Their relationship is mostly the same as it is in the original. The major difference here though, is that Goku just seems more stressed than usual. His whole manner of how he looked at life was unraveling quickly and he's not liking it. Roshi then learns that someone has begun to hunt down all the highest qualifying tournament fighters, which seems rather odd. Why would they be taken out of commission all of a sudden? Meanwhile, Goku and Yajirobe are eventually able to get rid of Symbol and Tambourine. Naturally, all of this is enraging their master, King Piccolo. King Piccolo gets into the thick of it then, and promptly takes Yajirobe's and Goku's Dragon Balls, nearly offing Goku in the process, with the young Ronin fleeing because... Yajirobe. At the same time, Bomber and the others use the Dragon Radar to determine that someone is collecting Dragon Balls, and at a pretty quick rate. Was it Goku? Was it someone else? Roshi then realises that this is not an accident, and decides to gather two of them on his own. Just like in the original, he has realised silently who this enemy is, and is trying to bait them with two Dragon Balls. If the person that he's thinking is after the Dragon Ball is there, he will find him. This time, Goku is witnessing the whole thing transpire, and is shocked to see his master succumbing to the hands of King Piccolo. Sure enough, Piccolo gets his youth back, and yeah, you know the rest of the story. In this timeline, Ten Shinhan doesn't know the Marfaba, so Drum and King Piccolo do not fear him that much. As for the whole thing with the Ultra Divine Water, that's still a thing, and so is Goku's power boost that allows him to easily defeat Drum. Ten Shinhan doesn't show any sign of relief, however, when he sees Goku, and Goku doesn't even try to make any sort of eye contact with him. The two of them haven't been able to put their differences aside, despite the great peril that they're about to face. And besides, Goku is far too focused on fighting King Piccolo. Ten Shinhan right now doesn't really care either. He's no distraction for him, and the young Saiyan manages to defeat King Piccolo, though the king is still able to produce that last egg, which will be his ultimate revenge. Goku is up for the challenge, and lets the egg go. After everything has settled, Goku explains his disappointment that such a despicable person like Ten Shinhan survived, but Roshi and Krillin didn't. Ten Shinhan then tries to explain, albeit half-heartedly, that he isn't like Mercenary Tao, and that the kids shouldn't be so assuming about people. But Goku leaves once more, without wishing to listen. With Roshi's kindness in mind, Ten Shinhan goes to work, together with everyone at Kame House. However, Someone has been watching the whole thing go down. From the lookout, we can see Kami, and he's not happy about the dilemma that he currently has. Sure, that Goku kid is strong and could prove very handy in saving Earth from bad forces, but his ever-increasing arrogance is slowly leading him down a wrong path, and may prove to make him more of a hindrance than a help. Then there's this Ten Shinhan person, who has done horrible things before, but he seems to be turning a new leaf and a new corner, and may become a better man than Goku. Which one should he choose to take to the next level? So vote now in today's poll. Which person should Kami choose? That choice is up to you. And that's where we're going to be leaving things for right now. So what do you guys think? How does Goku go about things now that he's flying effectively solo? Will Ten Shinhan matter more in the grand scheme of things? Leave a comment below and let's get this discussion going. And I shall see you in the next video. Catch you later!